And so now we move on to hyperbole, another figurative language that you can use in your poetry. So a hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration. So a classic example of a hyperbole is, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Whether or not you want to eat meat, let alone a horse, isn't necessarily the question, but the fact that you could eat an entire horse or that you would eat it, it's an exaggeration. You're not that hungry. Some other examples is the whole world is staring at me. Even if you wore your shirt inside out and backwards, the whole world is not going to be looking at you. So that's an exaggeration because it can feel that way. And that's why a poet might want to use it because when you exaggerate, you can communicate the intensity of your feelings. So if you just say people looked at me, okay. But if you're like, you say the whole world was staring at me, I now know how intensely uncomfortable you would feel. And then the other one, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Um, Another great thing about hyperboles is they can add humor. So sometimes they are written to emphasize the dramatic intensity of someone's feelings. Sometimes they're written just to give humor and have fun. So this next poem that I want to show you kind of does both. As I read it, if you would try to find all the hyperboles, the extreme exaggerations, you can do that. Um, as you read, you could write them down or you can just take your finger and mark them um, on your iPad as we go. So here's the poem. In fact, this was the first poem I had ever memorized as a little second grader. It's called Homework, Oh Homework. Homework, oh homework, I hate you. You stink. I wish I could wash you away in the sink. If only a bomb would explode you to bits. Homework, oh homework, you're giving me fits. I'd rather take baths with a man-eating shark or wrestle a lion alone in the dark, eat spinach and liver, pet ten porcupines, than tackle the homework my teacher assigns. Homework, oh homework, you're last on my list. I simply can't see why you even exist. If you just disappeared, it would tickle me pink. Homework, oh homework, I hate you. You stink. Okay, give you about five more seconds to go back, see if you can find the hyperboles, and then I'll move to the answers. Okay, so in pink are all the hyperboles. There's a ton in here. Uh, as I said, this poem kind of uses hyperboles for both ways. We get the intensity of this person's feelings, but we also get some humor because we know that this is extreme and no sane person would actually want to take a bath with a man eating shark. You would rather um, write me an essay than do that. Okay, so now I want you to try to interpret these hyperboles. So, um, just jot down in your notebook, what does each of these hyperboles mean, literally? So number one, his stomach is a bottomless pit. Number two, it feels like my birthday will never come. And number three, you're walking slower than a snail. In five seconds, I'll move to the next slide with the answers. So his stomach is a bottomless pit, means he can eat a lot. Feels like my birthday will never come. The speaker is impatient for their birthday. And you're walking slower than a snail. You are walking slow. You are probably walking as slow as I do down the hall. Okay. So that's all for hyperboles. Um, start using them in your poetry whenever you want to show the intensity of a feeling or you want some humor.